one year ago, news no one wanted to hear. Coronavirus is now in Colorado. One case identified out of Summit County. Silent, swift, and serious, the virus took hold of our state. And I remember them dropping the IV, and then less than 24 hours later, they had me on a vent. Our world upended in a flash. Staying at home is our best chance, our, our only realistic chance to avoid a catastrophic loss of life. We wore our masks, we kept our distance, doing our part to ease the burden on healthcare staff. You always worry about, am I gonna become uh, infected? Am I, and if I am, um, am I going to infect a loved one? We adapted, we stayed strong, standing together, just a little farther apart than before. <laughs> I want to send a heartfelt message of appreciation to all the doctors, nurses, and staff. We found heroes and lost some along the way. Now breakthrough vaccines are rolling out, a bright hope at the end of a dark, uncertain year. Tonight, we pause. I don't think any of us can ever be fully prepared for the news of the last year. Remembering those we've lost, reflecting on the challenges we've overcome and looking ahead with optimism to Colorado's comeback. There are brighter days ahead. Tonight, let's just take a moment, take a breath and appreciate where we are right now. That's right, you've done your part together. We've made it through 12 months of coronavirus worries and concerns and we know it hasn't been easy. Hopefully it won't last much longer either. We finally have light at the end of the tunnel. Welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. Thank you so much for joining us. This evening, Governor Polis addressed our state, encouraged all of us to reflect on the difficult path that we've traveled and rest assured that we can beat this, saying we are almost there. Denver 7 CB Cotton is live at our state capitol this evening. CB, this was a night to reflect and honor the 6,000 Coloradans we have lost to this awful virus. Also a moment of optimism for our state. Jacqueline and Brian, it certainly was, and I'm actually right here in front of the city and county building, and you can see behind me, it's lit with the color magenta. That represents kindness and compassion. Two things that have gotten us through thus far, and two things that will get us through to the end of this pandemic. No amount of preparation could have prepared us to lose so many. We've lost 5,984 souls in Colorado to COVID-19. Those departed souls bring the ones still here to mourn. This will never be forgotten. A year ago today, Colorado confirmed the first case of COVID-19 in our state. I sadly reported from Colorado Springs our state's first death from COVID-19. But through the pain we conquered over the last 12 months, Colorado together learning how to socialize distantly and abide by restrictions meant to keep us all safe. And I've been inspired to see it manifest in so many different ways across our great state. And now the end is in sight, hope in the form of a vaccine. Modern science has triumphed over the virus and handed us not one, not two, but three safe and highly effective tools to prevent further loss. But for those who didn't see the better days, we remember with prayer Amen. and song. Because nothing could have prepared us to lose so many. But now it's time to look forward and come out of this stronger than ever. We need some closure. Jacqueline, at tonight's remembrance, there were not only elected leaders present, there were also members of the Colorado National Guard. And of course, they've been instrumental in our state's vaccine distribution thus far, and we thank them for their service. Yes, we Back do. to you all. Thank you so much, CB. And there is good reason for optimism right now. This curve you're looking at right now shows the number of hospital beds in use because of the virus. Look how it spiked back in December, nearly 2000 beds in use at that point. That's when leaders asked us to step up. Many counties stopped indoor dining, encouraged us to mask up and stay home when possible. And you listen, you can see the numbers just tumbled. Your discipline helped get it down to just over 350 today. We're not out of the woods yet, but we are headed in the right direction. Over the last year, we've come to rely on our state health staff to keep us safe and informed, and the challenges they faced were staggering. The state health department says it stepped up COVID testing from 160 a day to a high of more than 66,000 in November. 
and staff is now coordinating the rollout of three different COVID vaccines with more than 1.6 million doses already administered. Jill Hunsaker Ryan, executive director of the state health department, says today is a day to be grateful for everything Coloradans have done to protect each other. We have all been in this together, enduring sacrifices, and now finally there is hope around the corner. With every person vaccinated, we all become safer and are closer to returning to normal. In the 12 months since this virus arrived in our state, nearly 6,000 Coloradans have lost their lives. Many were frontline workers in places like grocery stores and meatpacking plants, and each of them has a unique story. And tonight, Denver 7's Addy Guajardo shares the story of a Colorado 21 year old who died from COVID complications last year. For his family, months later, the shock and grief are still raw. Well, it's truly a beautiful night. Downtown Denver completely lit up in magenta to show kindness and compassion for all those lives lost. The brothers, the sisters, the mothers, the fathers. I spoke to Cody Lister's family. They tell me each life has a story. Their son Cody dreamed of becoming a police officer. Photos and memorabilia of Cody Lister fill up his childhood home. He was this larger than life personality. He was the energy and the like the spirit of this house. The heart and the soul. A gentle giant at six foot two. And he was a hugger. It's hard to believe the 21 year old with a zest for life and a passion for baseball has been gone nearly a year. It was changing that calendar page to a new year that you knew he was not going to have any part of. That was probably the hardest. What hurts the most? There's not going to be any new memories or a big brother to pave the way because he was he was gone too soon and it just it wasn't fair. Cody was among the first and the youngest to lose his life to COVID-19 last April. Cody, we love you. And tonight on the anniversary of the first COVID-19 diagnosis in our state. You grieve every day. He's one of thousands of lives lost being remembered and honored by Coloradans and his family. We just don't want him to be forgotten because he was such a kind loving person to his family. His loss was detrimental and his impact game changing. He's a hero, a hero that sent a powerful message of the danger the virus posed. His story is going to outlive us. You know, his memory is going to outlive us. Cody's mother tells me as states begin to lift mask mandates across the US, she wants people to remember her son Cody and how they were robbed of that final goodbye. She's pleading with the public to listen to health officials and to continue wearing masks and social distancing. Addy Guajardo, Denver 7. Meanwhile, as we work to rebound, there is new hope for Coloradans eagerly awaiting the coronavirus vaccine. Today, our state moved into a new phase. It means people aged 60 and older are now eligible for the shot, along with people 16 and older who have two high risk health conditions and some frontline staff are now eligible as well. That includes grocery store clerks as well as workers in agriculture and meatpacking. And that's good news for the staff at the JBS meatpacking plant in Greeley. It reported more than 500 COVID cases among its staff and was one of the earliest and most severe outbreaks in Colorado. And today the plant partnered with the state to start vaccinating its workers. Union leaders say it's a big relief. Today I wanted to focus on our members getting the vaccine um, because this is a big step in the healing process, I also I, I believe, and also to add that additional layer of safety for these employees. So the plant will close tomorrow as well to run another vaccine clinic clinic for its workers. Anyone who gets a vaccine will also receive four hours pay. Custer County, just southeast of Pueblo, decided it is time to lift all COVID restrictions. The state health department is saying not so fast. The director of the Board of Health for the county, Custer County, says there's a 0% COVID positivity rate, no hospitalizations, but the state health department says the county simply doesn't have the power to lift the COVID restrictions and that this county should follow the COVID dial. Republican state lawmakers are pushing for more local control during health emergencies. Two bills went to committee today. They were both killed by Democrats. 
Cherry Creek schools are planning to bring back full in-person classes for middle and high school students next month. The change will apply to students who chose the in-person option but are currently taking hybrid classes. By waiting until April, the district says it gives families time after spring break to monitor for COVID symptoms before diving back into the classroom. A firm return date has not been set yet. A live look at our nation's capital where a COVID-19 relief bill is back on track. Senate leaders hammered out a deal with moderate Democrat Joe Manchin on pandemic jobless benefits. The new plan caps the unemployment benefit boost at $300 instead of 400. With that wrinkle worked out, the stage is set for a series of votes on President Biden's pandemic relief bill. It brings out a different type of grit. A year of shutdowns, remote learning, and restrictive rules. Most of our businesses closed for some period of time. Did our state get it right or miss the mark on COVID rules? Unfortunately, Colorado's lagging behind the rest of the nation. Tonight, we're going 360, scoring Colorado's pandemic response. Beautiful weather shaping up this weekend here across Colorado, but yes, there's another chance for snow. I'll let you know when it arrives.